hello everyone a uh, very good morning uh, so we will be waiting for a couple of minutes for everyone to join uh, and we'll be starting the workshop then after Hi, good morning everyone. I'm delighted to welcome you all to our workshop on Microsoft AI Fundamentals AI 900 in collaboration with Synergetics and Microsoft Data and Azure AI. My name is Bhakti Jain and I'll be your host and facilitator for today's session. Today's workshop is all about us coming together to explore the incredible opportunities that Azure AI offers. Whether you are a seasoned developer or just starting your journey into the world of artificial intelligence, there is something here for everyone. Before we start the session, I would like to share an important information to all of you that end of the workshop will be providing you with a complimentary Azure AI batches, a QR code that you all have to scan so you can access the AI batches that will add numerous benefits to your profile and yet you access the study materials and the certificates. So without any further delay, I would like to welcome our today's mentor, Manasi Sahani, a seasoned expert in AI and Azure technology who will be guiding us through today's workshop. Introducing Mansi, she is an IoT, data analytics and ML consultant and trainee associated with Synergetics. She is a very capable consultant, experienced in training and skilling, designing learning curriculums and mentoring professional in various organizations. A learning consultant, content developer, corporate trainer, moderator with multiple years of experience, Manasi has played many roles and provided skilling solution for multiple organizations for multiple organizations. Soon got interested in the entire end-to-end -end IoT solution with special interest in building the backend analytics. This lead to her building expertise on latest and the cutting edge technologies like Azure Cloud, Azure IoT Services, data engineering, data analytics, and machine learning and data visualization technologies. So she is such an expert and we are very honored to have Manasi here for today's session. So over to you, Manasi. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Bhakti. A very good morning to everyone. So Bhakti has given a beautiful introduction about myself. So I'm a Microsoft certified trainer. And I have around uh, five to six years of experience now uh, in uh, 
teaching uh, IoT, data analytics, Python language, and of course, artificial intelligence. So today we are going to learn about how uh, can you start your journey in artificial intelligence? How can you use Azure? Okay, in order to work with artificial intelligence, what are the services that Azure provides in, in context to uh, artificial intelligence is what we are going to see today. Okay, and we are going to, I'm going to show you all only two demos and rest of it will be more of explanation and how you can start. And of course, I'll be sharing links, uh, study material links with you all so that you all can go back and study and you can kickstart your journey in uh, Azure, I mean, in the Azure artificial intelligence domain. And I will talk about the fundamental certification and after which what kind of certification that is the advanced certification that you can take. OK, all that I will be explaining uh, to you. OK, so let's get uh, started. So I'm going to share my screen. So uh, before we start the session, like I would like to hear from you all, what is artificial intelligence according to you all? Like why is artificial, like what is artificial intelligence? Can you all like tell me in the chat box, what is your understanding of artificial intelligence? Yes, guys, let me know your understanding of artificial intelligence. Have you ever worked with artificial intelligence? Since I, I, I believe you all are, so you can put it in the chat box. You all don't have to unmute yourself and let me know. Please put it in the chat box. Yes, guys, what is artificial intelligence? Okay, any other definition? <clears throat> okay, I can see a lot of people are still asleep, so I will not disturb you all. Y'all can just uh, li listen to the lecture, no worries. Okay, so moving on to the more, most important uh, question is what is artificial intelligence? Because if you don't know this, okay, um, uh, understanding today's theory is going to be, I mean, it is a important question that we need to understand. So artificial intelligence, if I have to put it in simple terms, okay, like, uh, yeah, you all are all right. It is something that performs, has to mimic the human brain, etc. That is there. That is obviously the definition of artificial intelligence. But it also has another meaning to it. Okay, it also has another meaning to it. It is a set of tools. Okay, used for. Okay, now it is used for two reasons. Okay. One is to make inferences from the data. Okay. One is to make inferences from the data. Now, what do I mean by inferences from the data? Okay. Uh, let, let's say I want to I want to infer like whether um, I want to get insight of the data. What is the data actually doing? Okay, I want to know, like I want to infer whether it will help me in uh, in help me in predicting something. Okay, so this is the first thing that uh, artificial intelligence is used for. It is used like if I want to analyze anything, I want to make out whether a customer has given me a review, whether it is a positive review or is it a negative review. If I want to find that out, okay, I can use AI for it. Normally, what would we need to do? Humans would be sitting and they would be 
individually analyzing the review that a customer has written, correct? And out of that, out of whatever the customer has written, using certain words, right? If it's a positive review, they will use great experience or good experience or wonderful experience, something like these. These words they use, right? In order to express that, okay, uh, this is a positive this thing. So we humans come to know, okay, this is a positive review. So we start inferring it or referring to it as a positive review. Whereas if it has to be a negative review, what do we do? We kind of pick out the negative words, awful, bad, pathetic, or etc. All those words lead to a negative feeling, right? They all lead to a negative feeling. So based on this, we can infer the data. OK, so for that, we use artificial intelligence. We infer from the data so that like when you want to analyze a text, we want to analyze the reviews. OK, now the second place where your AI can be used is for predictions. Is for predictions. Now, what do I mean by predictions? Uh, if you ever go to a bank to apply for a loan, OK? There is a person responsible who decides whether you get a loan or not, right? Whether you get a loan or not, it's in his hands. He will consider certain factors like what is your uh, salary, how much, uh, uh, where, what kind of job are you doing, etc. All those things he will consider and he will make a prediction out of it whether you should get um, a loan or not. Now, let's say I want the artificial intelligence to do the same. OK, let's say I want the artificial intelligence to predict whether I will get a loan or not. OK, these are my factors. OK, based on which whether I will get loan or not. So this is what the second thing artificial intelligence does. It will help you make predictions. It will help you come to a outcome whether this will be possible or not. OK, so this is where or this is what we can define an artificial intelligence. Yes, it will mimic the human brain. OK, that is a definition. But why will it mimic the human brain? Because our human brain is so is developed so much that we can do so many things. Correct. So for what can or how can we or for what can we use artificial intelligence? It is for inferring the data and second is to predict from that data. Now, how do I do these two things? How do I predict and how do I infer the data? So if I have to predict or infer the data, the answer to how is by using an AI model. OK, it is by using an AI model. Now, what is an AI model? OK, so AI model in simple terms, I would say, is something that we are trying to simulate. It is something that we are trying to predict, trying to infer, but using statistics. OK, where mathematics is involved, where we are using the concept of maths and we are trying to predict, trying to infer the data. That's what is basically a AI model. So a AI model. Is a statistical. Representation. Of a real world process. For real world processes. OK, wherever you use maths, wherever you use statistics in order to predict something, in order to infer something or in order to simulate something that is termed as an AI model. OK, so an AI model is nothing but a representation of the real world process. Now, what do I mean by this? Let's take an example. OK, let's say we are in the real estate business. OK, and my job is to collect data related to the housing sector okay and i want to predict okay i want to predict what will be the price of the house or how much will the house cost based on the city and the square feet of that house okay now what let's say 
I have the following information. Let's say this I have collected, okay, through surveys or something. We all know that we need to do some sampling, okay. The, that's the starting point. We need to use some sampling in order to collect the data, okay. So let's say I have done a survey and I have collected the, the following data. Okay, I have city. Okay, and based on these two factors, we will detect the or predict the price. So let's say the size of the house is 100 square feet. Okay, and the city is, let's say, Mumbai. Okay, and if the house is in, has a square feet of 100 and it is belonging to the city of Mumbai, let's say the price will be. One CR. Okay, let's say the price will be one crore. Okay, the next square feet, let's say I collected was 200 square feet. And again, the city is Mumbai. Okay, and the price is two CR. Okay, it is two crore. Now, let's say I have 300 square feet, and again, the city is Mumbai. Now, sorry. Now, can you tell me what will be the price? Can you estimate what will be the price for the 300 square feet? Yes, guys. Can you tell me what will be the? Can you estimate the price of 300 square feet? Yes, absolutely right. So what did you do? Like what, what kind of approach did you use over here in order to predict, okay, the price of 300 square feet is going to be 3 CR. What did you do? Don't you think you use mathematics? Don't you think you use statistics? Right? You found out that for 100 square feet, it is 1 crore. For 200, it is 2 crore. Then, of course, for 300, it is going to be 3 crore. So, the approach that you did, the approach that you take, took, sorry, is nothing but statistics. It is nothing but maths, right? So, that is what is an AI model. And that is what is an AI model. So, whatever you did right now was nothing but a AI model. And this is now if I have to give it to a computer, we all that is what is termed as an AI model where we use statistics in order to predict, in order to infer. I inferred from the data. I got an insight that for 100 square feet, the price is 1 CR. For 200, it is 2 CR. For 300, it is 3 CR. And I also made a prediction that for 300 or now for 400, if I have to make a prediction, we know. Okay, but if the city changes, then the price will also change, then our predictions will also change, then our inference will also change. Is this clear? So this is what is an AI. Now, in today's time, we are, you know, we are listening to a lot of terms related to AI, right? We are we come across a lot of terms that um. Okay, we come across terms like AI, we have come across terms like uh, machine learning, we have come across terms like deep learning, we have come across terms now since OpenAI came into picture, a new term has been developed in the AI and that is generative AI. So what is all of this? What is the difference between AI? What is the difference between machine learning, what is the difference between deep learning and generative AI? So let's understand the difference between all these terms that are there. So so we have AI versus ML. So I'm going to do that. Versus deep learning versus gen AI. So don't worry, we are going to see what is machine learning. We are going to see what is DL. We are going to see generative AI. 
okay but just i want to give you all a, a holistic view okay of all the all these definitions that are there okay but don't worry we are going to understand each of them individually okay now when i say ai okay ai is a broader term that is used okay let's say we have this okay so this represents this bigger box okay represents ai so this is your ai that is there bigger box a bigger picture okay they it is nothing but your ai Okay, so what is AI? We just saw it is nothing but something that uses the human brain. It mimics the, uh, not I would not say actually mimics the human brain, but performs, or we can say it is a domain where we can build applications. Okay, where we can build applications that can perform. Okay, its own task without the intervention, without the interfere, without the human interfering in the application. Okay, we do not need a human in order to do all that the application needs to do. Let's say you are on Netflix. Okay, you, we all use the popular Netflix uh, streaming platform or any other OTT platform. Okay, and on in that, if you ever go, like whatever movies you have seen or series you have seen in the past, okay, based on that past experience, your Netflix will or any OTT platform will provide you uh, or will recommend some series, some movies related to that, right? Related to, let's say, you've seen a lot of action movies, you've seen a lot of action series, Okay, you've seen a lot of action genres or you have seen a lot of comedy genre movies or series. So it will recommend those movies to you, correct? It will recommend uh, new movies that are, that are coming probably, okay, that are going to come in the genre, comedy genre or in the romantic genre, etc. How is it able to do that? Because you have developed that application in such a way that it will provide recommendations to you based on the past experience that you have. And there, the human is not coming into picture. There, uh, hello, Bhakti, can you confirm whether I'm audible or not? Uh, yes, ma'am, so you are uh, perfectly audible. Yeah, okay. So uh, please, uh, the one who is facing uh, can't hear me, please check your internet connectivity. Okay, yeah. Coming to the AI concept. So this is what basically AI is. Okay, this is what basically AI is, where everything is performed without the human interfering. Okay. This is what is AI. Just get it a little down so that you all can see. Okay, so AI is a broader term, okay? It is something that is a broader term used in general. Okay. Now, when we talk about machine learning, okay, or we talk about deep learning, or we talk about generative AI that has come in now, 
okay they are nothing but subsets of your ai itself okay all of them okay whether you talk about machine learning you talk about deep learning okay they are nothing but ai only so they are not something that is distinct or away from ai okay they become a part of ai itself so the first subset that comes into picture is your machine learning so this bigger circle the uh, first subset that comes into picture is your machine learning that is ml so we will see in depth okay we are going to understand what is machine learning uh, what are the different types of machine learnings okay and we are going to see how can you use as your to build your ml models as well so this is what we are going to see so machine learning to be to put it simply okay again the definition remains the same similar to ai that we talked about to predict to infer all those things but machine learning is a little more primitive okay it uses statistics it has stat tools okay any model that you develop okay you need to have a knowledge of the statistics okay you need to have how does a particular because machine you machine learning uses something called as algorithms and algorithms are nothing but statistics okay so here again it will do all of it that you name okay it will do uh, it will perform it will infer the data it will predict the data all of that but it uses algorithms or statistics that are there that actually are used in order to predict the machine learning model so machine learning is a subset within the ai domain okay now uh, so machine learning like i said uses statistics it is not something that will mimic exactly the human brain okay it is not something that will perform any will perform task of course without the intervention of a human being so you don't have to sit and look at things okay that is very much there but let's say i want you know the i want my human brain to be mimicked okay let's say i want to uh, understand the text i want to understand the image whether it's a dog or a cat whether it's a circle or it's a rectangle or a triangle what kind of an image is this okay here what is happening you provide data in the form of files okay you use files you have some data already in the form of files that you will provide provide but let's say i want to understand the speech i want to do a translation i want to do i want to predict what kind of an image it is or nowadays uh, like we have this face recognition right whenever you go to uh, the airport okay by just your facial recognition they come to know okay this is you but the moment you enter the airport you don't have to put give your id card anywhere any longer now okay ai is taking over that they will just scan your face and it will feed it in their database and keep it okay they will keep that and the moment you uh uh bhakti am i audible uh yes you are okay so arudra if you if you can't hear me please uh check your internet connectivity uh, uh i think the rest of them can hear so please join the session again by leaving and uh, come uh, rejoining again so probably it may go okay so yeah so uh, coming back so i told you machine learning is something that will work on your files okay you need files in the form of csv or text or something okay uh, so here this is what and it will use statistics now let's say i want to mimic my human brain the way our brain understands things right like i want to predict whether this is a dog or a cat i want to predict images i want to recognize faces okay then we need to use another subset of the ai 
which is called as deep learning. Okay, it comes inside your machine learning. Okay, it is a subset of your machine learning. So this is So this is deep learning. Okay, its job is to mimic human brain. Okay, the way our brain works, okay, which has neurons and those neurons are connected with each other. Okay, and they stimulate some signals. So they take the senses, right? Taste, the smell, the vision. Right, all those things that our brain, how the way our brain works, exactly the same way your machine, I mean your AI model, if it has to mimic that approach, is termed as a deep learning model. Okay, that approach is called as a deep learning model. So this is a subset. It comes. It is becoming more smaller. So you first of all need to understand what is machine learning. If you understand machine learning, then you understand deep learning. And now if you understand deep learning, the smaller subset of all is your Gen AI. Okay, as the name says Gen AI, okay, its job is to generate something, right? Generative AI, its job is to generate, that is your Gen AI, its job is to generate, okay, you want to write an email, you want to write an essay, you just give something called as prompts. Okay, and we all have used chat GPT. We have all used Dali somewhere down the line, correct? To generate images, to generate text. So that is what is the smallest subset of generative AI. Sorry, of AI. Okay, so this is how it is differentiated. AI is the broader Process. I mean, it's the bigger picture. Okay, inside it, you have these uh, services that is ML, deep learning, and generative AI. So, something that generates, I'll write it here. Okay. So this is what is the difference between AI, ML, DL, and generative AI. So let's look at some of the presentations. Okay, and of course, don't worry. I will be uh, sharing the link with you all so that you all can study what is um, from where you can study and kickstart your journey in artificial intelligence. So we understood what is artificial intelligence. Okay, something that helps us infer data, predict the data. Okay, and we use AI models on top of it in order to predict and infer data based on the historical data, based on the day-to-day -day things that we see, visuals that we see, smells that we see. I mean, not smell here, but the uh, uh, speech, okay, based on that. Okay, all that is nothing but your artificial intelligence. Then artificial intelligence has workloads inside it. So we discussed about the workloads, okay, the uh, differentiating factors. So ML, DL, generative AI, NLP, document intelligence, knowledge mining. These are nothing but the workloads of AI. So all of them are nothing but AI itself, but they are nothing but, I mean, they are a part. They are nothing but the workloads. Okay, so you have machine learning. Okay, machine learning, you have computer vision, that is your deep learning. Okay, you have NLP for sentiment analysis, for speed, etc. All of that. Okay, and then you have document intelligence, which is like let's say you have an invoice. 
okay generally it is used in organization where people have to submit invoices and inside that invoices they can just you know if they have continuous invoices coming they can just use the document intelligence and just i mean use it to process the receipt or the invoice that is there so the human doesn't have to sit all the time look at things oh what is the total then add it what is the next total in the other invoice add it they don't have to do sit and do that manual task the once you create a model around it the it will pick up that intelligence and start implementing the invoicing or whatever you have done on top of it okay then you can create chatbots you can create a knowledgeable store from there the model will go and get the data okay some pre processed data will be put into it okay like some faqs like all of that okay so something that is frequently asked they can go and take from that mining knowledge mine that they have created so that you, you don't have to keep a human constantly in order to you know answer the questions that people are asking so that's what basically is knowledge mining or you could use it for um, even understanding the pdf or something files that are used in your organization so that is these are the six workloads of uh, artificial intelligence okay and since artificial intelligence has come in okay it has become so popular okay there can be a uh, just a minute yeah so at times there can be misuse of ai right? and we all know ai is using our data it is using data that is private to us correct it is our confidential data we don't want to share that data with anyone okay and we all know a very famous line from the spider man movie that with great power comes great responsibility right though ai has been developed things are getting easy okay those things can be misused as well okay so it is our job to use ai in a responsible manner okay and that is why there are some principles that you should keep in mind when you are working with ai you have to be responsible you can't be something that misuses like we know all these big big companies like meta alphabet that is google okay they are using our data okay our data is being sold to a different lot of companies and there's a suit that is going on in the us i think okay so you have to be very careful whenever you are using somebody else's data okay you are uh, and it is your own risk also right in instagram whatever you are putting it is your own you are putting things in your own risk okay but still you have to develop ai model in such a way that you are you are not uh, i mean it is responsible it is it has to cater to the human need okay it's it it should not be a problem to the human it should cater to their problem okay like it has to solve i mean it has to reduce the task on the human okay so that is why we develop ai that is why ai has come into picture correct so you have to be very very careful so the, there are six principles the first principle is fairness of course you have to treat everyone fairly things have to be treated fairly it's not that based on the gender you will not give somebody a loan because she is a female she can't manage things it's not that you, you she can't repay that loan right it's not that so you have to develop a ai model such that you that such that it does not consider bias okay into it based on any factor that you provide the salary is less it does mean okay that person will take time to repay that loan but it's not that he will not be able to pay right so you have to consider these options so the first thing is you cannot be biased you have to treat everyone fairly you can't give judgment based on the gender or anything in terms of let's say people are coming to ask for a loan you are a bank and people are coming to ask for a loan okay the second thing is responsibility 
uh, sorry, reliability and safety. Like I said, you have to be very careful. Like you have Tesla cars where they say, okay, we will have uh, driverless. Okay, the machine will learn, I mean, will drive the car. Okay, in that context, you have to be very, very careful. Okay, you have to ensure the safety because when you're driving, there are multiple cars on the roads. Okay, it shouldn't be that your model is going and causing a collision. Accidents are uh, increasing because the mo mo machine is driving the car. Okay, you have to train the model rigorously so that it does not cause any collision. There is no uh, human life put at stake because the one who is sitting in the car can also be at uh, risk, correct? So you have to make your AI systems reliable and safe. Okay, you have to take in a lot of uh, probabilities and combinations you need to keep in mind when you are developing a AI model. Then, of course, I told you privacy security is something that is very critical. Okay, it is going to be because your data is being leaked. It will be leaked. Right, it is going to cause a problem to us. Okay, so personal details are should be kept private. Okay, like your medical data, your banking data. Okay, so that it is not, uh, so that it is not misused. So you have to because you will be developing AI models using some other somebody else's data. So you can't give somebody else's data in free. Right, this is what uh, these companies do. Okay, this your data is actually sold. Whatever you put on Instagram, you put on Facebook, you put on any of your social media platforms, LinkedIn or whatever. Okay, that that is why I mean Microsoft has not come into that context because it generally doesn't sell data. It is a much more it sticks to its uh, uh, privacy statement that is there. Okay, so that is why yeah, but you have to you can't sell anyone's private data, right? Then of course, inclusiveness, okay? You have to consider all the sectors. Humans are uh, you, all the sectors of humans, okay? If you have developed an application and that application is not catering to a blind person, that means you have violated the law of inclusiveness, right? You Because like I said, AI is developed to cater the needs of the human. You are not you have not taken picture into the uh, physically disabled people, the ones who are blind, the ones who are deaf, who can't speak. Okay, you need to take those people also into consideration while you are developing your AI systems. Okay, so that is what is called as inclusiveness. Okay, then the next principle is transparency. Okay, you have to make your AI transparent enough. So that I come to know on what are they based? I mean, what kind of predictions it is doing based on what? Based on what is it doing those predictions? How is it predicting the loan? Based on what? What are the factors? Based on what are the stocks being or the uh, what kind of stocks? Where should I put in the money? Financial data. Okay, then the data has to be, I mean, your system has to be transparent and should be aware that users have to be aware okay this is what is being used this is what is being uh this is what it is using in order to predict the outcome correct so this is what is basically your transparency principle your systems have to be transparent transparent if they are not you will you can fall into trouble okay and the last one that is accountability who is responsible who is responsible in taking these decisions? Okay, in like who is responsible is what you are basically trying to make up. So these are the six principles that you have to keep in mind. Okay, whenever you are working with AI, if you violate these six principles, you are going to face a lawsuit. Okay, and this is what these big organizations are facing today. Okay, so now we talked about these six workloads, correct? Machine learning, computer vision, that is your deep learning, NLP, okay, document intelligence, knowledge mining, 
and generative AI. Okay, so let's go ahead and understand each of them. Okay, understand what is machine learning, understand what is computer vision, and etc. Okay, so let's go ahead. Now, let's take the very first workload. That is machine learning. Okay, let's understand what is machine learning. Okay, so machine learning, like I said, is something that uses statistics, uses math, okay, in order to predict the outcome. Okay, it is something I would say this is the foundation of AI. Okay, whenever people want to start their journey in AI, it is always recommended that you start on you start with machine learning. Okay, so machine learning is no different from AI. If you know machine learning, then you will understand deep learning and then you will understand generative AI. Okay, so machine learning is the foundation. And that is why if you recall, I had put this as the bigger circle. Okay, that is why machine learning comes first. Okay, so machine learning is the foundation of AI. Okay, it is the foundation. <clears throat> of AI, it uses statistics and mathematics. Okay, for modeling of data. Okay, modeling meaning uh, getting the data ready for prediction, for inferring. Okay, that is what basically it means. Okay, so let's say you want to, you know, um, predict how many ice creams will you sell, okay, if for a, on a particular day, okay, based on historical data, based on the weather. Okay, because generally in summer season, which is now, it is scorching outside, right? The temperatures go till 50 degree and so on and so forth. Since, I mean, we are all uh, in a tropical country. Okay, temperatures soar up to 50 degrees in some parts. It is 40 degrees in some parts. So generally people prefer something that is cool, that is cool, I mean, will provide coolness to their body. So people tend to eat ice creams, right? So let's say I want to predict Okay, how many people will, uh, I mean, how much ice cream will I sell on a particular day in what, what is that? And we all know that weather changes on a daily basis, on an hourly basis. It can rain any time now, right? It, the, the weather, I mean, the climate change is for real. So things can change drastically and very fast. Okay, so if I have to make predictions, we can definitely use statistics. Okay, and statistics, how can we use? We can put it or apply it on historical data. Okay, take historical data. How many ice creams did I sell in the past few days? Okay, past few months. Based on that, we can do predictions. Okay, even predict loan, predict whether a person is going to get diabetes or not. Based on the past history genes of that particular patient. So this is what is basically machine learning. So machine learning is mathematics and statistics. Okay, so you need to, um, you basically are simulating a function. Okay, which will, the function which will be responsible. Okay, a function that will basically calculate. Okay, based or give you the output based on the input that you have provided. Okay, this is what is a machine learning. What is machine learning in simple terms? Now, 
machine learning is divided into two. Okay, I'll just center this. Okay, machine learning is divided into two. One is called as a supervised learning. Okay, it is divided into two. One is one type or one of uh, uh, yeah, one type of machine learning is called as supervised learning and the other is called as unsupervised machine learning. Okay, these are the two types of machine learning that is there. Then, of course, there is reinforcement and all of that. That is also uh, definitely there. So I'll just put this thing here. Okay, so what is supervised machine learning and what is unsupervised machine learning? Supervised machine learning is like when we have all been to school, right? And in school, we had a teacher. Okay. Uh, Bhakti, can you confirm whether I'm audible or not? Uh, yes, ma'am, so you're audible. Okay. So, um, Uh, this I don't know <laughs> why chat GPT has data only till 2021. Probably because you are using a, a GPT model called as 3.5, which is a free or an open source. Okay. Um, and uh, everything, I mean, uh, training a gen AI model, okay, requires a lot of money. Okay. It requires a lot of investment. Okay. And, um, so 3.5, so GPT 3.5 is the basic model that is there. So that is why they have only data till 2021. And if you want to use data after that, you need to pay. So why they haven't updated because for these reasons, because training a gen AI model is not cheap, to be honest. It requires a lot of investment, a lot of money. Okay, and of course, if I have to get data from n number of sources, it's basically using the internet, right? Right. I if I have to generate something, okay. If I have to generate something, it has we need data from other people. Real estate, like I have to generate real estate data. I have to you have you want somebody to write an email for you. You want somebody to write, or you want something uh, to be generated, okay? So you need data. You need to maintain that data, and on top of that. Okay, you need a lot of resources. Okay, you need a team to generate that particular um, handle that data, maintain that data. Okay, so a lot of investment is required. It is not very easy. So that is why the GPT 3.5, if you've used one GPT, one is an open source and the other is, uh, uh, I think GPT 4 is paid. So you need to pay. So for that maintenance, for the computational power, like Chris is saying, is absolutely right. So for that, you need the maintenance. Okay, so that is why it has not updated the data. Okay, coming back to machine learning. Okay, so machine learning is classified or has two types. One is supervised machine learning and the other is unsupervised. Now, what is supervised machine learning? Supervised machine learning is like you have a teacher right in a classroom okay right now i am your teacher and i'm tell, talking about machine learning i'm talking about ai with y'all how you can kick start your journey into machine learning or ai okay so um i am there to guide you i am there to help you correct so that is what is basically supervised machine learning as well where you have something called as a target where you have something called as a target value or a label okay so the data in your supervised machine learning has something called as features and target or 
label. Okay, so what do I mean by this? So the model knows what kind of output I need to produce. The model knows that it has a target. Okay, this is what I am supposed to achieve. This is what I am supposed to predict. It has a already predicted outcome, probably by some human being. It has been predicted. It has a reference point. It has a guiding point for it. Like you have me right now to help you guide into AI. OK, that's the same thing with your data. OK, it's the same thing with your data. It has features. It has a target. It knows that this is supposed to, this is what I'm supposed to uh, achieve. OK, this is what I'm supposed to get. OK, and based on that, it will predict the output. OK, so this is what is supervised machine learning, where you have features and based on the features, you get a target value and then you will predict. So there is something called as actual value and predicted value. Actually, actual meaning where the actual value is supposed to be this and your predicted value is something that has been predicted by the machine. OK, now. The supervised machine learning model is divided into two again. One is the regression model, okay, regression uh, machine learning. And the other is classification supervised machine learning model. OK, these are the two things. These are the two types of. Machine learning models that you can develop. Now, what is regression? What is classification? So generally, um, we have two types of data. OK, one is numeric data. OK, and the other is categorical data. So first of all, let's talk about numeric data. What is numeric data? Or it is also termed as continuous data. OK, continuous data. So numeric data is something that has numbers. OK, let's say, for example, I go to a car showroom I, because I want to uh, buy a car. OK, or let's say I, I belong. I have, yeah, let's say I go to a car showroom and I want to buy a car. OK, and before I go and uh, well, let's say I have a car. OK, and uh, I want to predict what will be the price of the car. Or we talked about the example. OK, when we started the session that uh, what is the price of the particular house? OK, based on certain features. OK, the output there that we were getting, the data was numeric. It was continuous. Correct. It was something that was continuously being generated. It is not something that was a fixed value. It was changing. It was continuously changing because based on the size of the house, our price was being generated, was being predicted. Correct. So that kind of a model, if I want to create. OK, that kind of a supervised machine learning model is called as regression. OK, it is termed as regression. So regression is something that is where a model is used or I mean, you have a model that will predict a numeric value, right? The price of the car, price of a house. OK, where it is going to be continuous, like the ice cream example I gave you all. How much sales will I uh, do? The number of ice creams that I will sell on that particular day. OK, selling of the property based on the size. OK, based on the number of bedrooms. OK, BHKs that are there. OK, uh, predict the price of the car based on the size, height, weight, uh, mileage. OK, uh, how much mileage is it? giving based on that if I predict the price of the car. So anywhere where numeric data is being generated, that kind of a model is called as a supervised uh, sorry regression model. OK, it is called as a regression model.
in a numeric value. So this is what is your regression model. OK, so this is one type. A little down. Then we have another type of data that is either cat. It's termed as categorical data. That means there are classifications of the data. Classes are created. OK, when like when we do when we do a coin toss, right? When we are uh, flipping a coin, OK? There, there can be only two outcomes, not more than two outcomes, right? There can be only two. Uh, either it can be a head or it could be a tail, right? Or like in a match, OK, any a sports match we are playing. There can be only one team that wins or there can be a draw also. Right. It, these are nothing but classifications, right? Win, loss, draw. OK, or we are flipping a coin. It can either be a head or a tail, right? So this is what is termed as classification, where the output, where your model predicts the outcome in a category or in a class, OK? Classifies or categorizes the data, and this data is in discrete form. It's not continuous. It is going to be discrete. It can either be a yes or a no. It could either be a success or a failure. It can either it can only be a head or a tail. Nothing between it, right? There can be nothing between it. So that is what is termed as a classification model. A model, if it predicts or represents a class, gets the predicts the output. Whether a person will get a loan or not, nothing between it. There's nothing hanging in between, right? So that is what is termed as a classification model. OK, it will determine or predict the output in the form of a categorical data. Okay. And this is your classification. Model. Okay. <clears throat> so this was your supervised machine learning. Classification can further be divided. Okay. Into two more types. One is your binary classification. Just say binary. And the other is a multi class classification. Now, what do I mean by binary and what do I mean by multi class? So, let I gave you the example of flipping a coin. So, the outcome can only be two things that is, a head or a tail, right? But now the banking example that I gave, a person can either get a loan or not get a loan. Correct. So those things where I'm out that the model is predicting only two outcomes. OK, where the classification is something called as two mutually exclusive outcomes. Now, what do I mean by mutually exclusive outcomes? OK, it can either be a yes or it can be a no opposite right they are mutually exclusive they're like opposites it can either be a head or it could be a tail it can either be a success or it can be a failure so that is what is a binary classification model okay the outcome has to be the model 
that predicts okay the outcome they have to be mutually exclusive it can either be only a head or it can only be a tail correct so this is what is termed as binary classification then the multi class classification i told you the example of a match where you have um uh, either the team can win the team can lose or it could be a draw between the two teams so there are three categories that get created okay so that kind of a classification is called as a multi class classification okay or you are probably uh, seeing a movie okay and in a movie there can be different genres it could be a comedy genre it could be a horror genre it could be a romantic genre it could be a sci-fi movie correct so that is called as a multi class model if you want a movie to be predicted into comedy romantic sci-fi sci etc that is called as a multi class cl classification model or like uh, we have a flower okay and flowers have petals correct those petals can be of different shapes sizes correct so based on the petals if i want to determine the type of the flower we can do that and that kind of a classification or that kind of a prediction is called as a multi class prediction okay so classification is divided into two just give me a minute now coming to supervised machine learning there is only one type of supervised unsupervised sorry machine learning and that is called as clustering so clustering basically in simple english means grouping okay it means uh, grouping in simple terms okay so if i want to uh, actually it's more or less similar to your multi class classification model that you create okay because you are also you are creating distinct i mean discrete groups okay like i gave you the example of the iris right i gave you the example of uh, uh the petals sorry the flower petals that i talked about so you could even call that as a uh, clustering okay where you are based on the petals based on the number of leaves okay you are grouping sorry you are grouping the flowers okay that you will that are predicted that is termed as clustering so clustering is basically creating discrete clusters so let's say you are doing a survey okay whether people like fast food or not or their choices are of healthy of eating healthy stuff okay so you are basically creating a class discrete cluster okay there can be people who are um, who are for both or one is against them and some other things you can get so based on the demographic uh, choices you kind of segregate the output where you do the sampling and all and you kind of segregate them out and whatever segregations you are creating you are basically creating groups so that is termed as clustering okay so this is what is basically machine learning okay this is what basically machine learning is made up of okay um now if you want to perform machine learning on azure okay let's talk about in terms of azure because The, we are gathered here to understand in context of azure so if i want to perform machine learning in azure there is a tool called as azure machine learning service okay it is called as azure machine learning service so now if i want to use this service i can use this service in three types okay i can use this service or in three ways not in three types i would say three ways the first way 
is through the designer is through the tool okay is through the tool called as designer okay so what is this designer let's say people are not because generally if you have to perform machine learning okay can you tell me which is the most popular language that is used in context of machine learning or ai okay which is the most popular language used yes absolutely right python is the most popular language that is used so let's say people don't know python let's say people are coming from the uh, are coming from a no coding background okay uh, people are not familiar with python and they don't want to learn python okay but still they want to develop machine learning models okay they still want to develop machine learning models for them designer has been developed so designer is like a low code or a no code no code kind of a service where people can just come and onto a canvas onto a page they can drag and drop the uh, steps for creating a machine sorry for developing or training a machine learning model okay so training is nothing but like there are processes in machine learning okay one is you train a model okay you are training basically is like developing step to train the model based on your historical data you use that and you you apply the algorithm on top of that okay and using that you are basically training a model okay so once you have trained the model the next step is to do testing okay you have to give it okay so let's say you get so i'll explain this when we do the lab when i perform the demo on top of this i'll explain that so this is what is the designer service in azure machine learning okay in azure machine learning studio actually this is called as studio so i'll show you how to create and everything all of that i will be showing to you all then the next service that you can use is called as auto ml okay it is called as automated ml let's say people don't want to even do the drag and drop options they don't want that okay so this i will i forgot to mention is also drag and drop okay so let's say people don't want to even do that they don't want to organize them into steps create something called as a pipeline so designer is basically like creating a pipeline okay let's say people don't want to do that also okay they just want to put in the data and they want the machine learning to automate itself and give me the output okay so that kind of a service in azure machine learning studio is called as the auto ml it is termed as auto ml so auto ml as the name says is automated ml where your machine learning model will be automated okay you just have to feed in the data and it will automatically do it uh, along with feeding the data you will also have to select what kind of algorithms you want to apply on top of that data based on that data so like i told you you can have a regression model you can have a classification model or a clustering model so you'll have to specify that to the uh, to the engine you will have to specify it okay and uh, because what kind of data you have given you should be able to tell the model i mean tell the ai system and based on that it will then create or train a model and then you can test the model and check the output so this is the uh, second service the third service is called as python sdk okay 
people who want to create machine learning using python they can still do it okay uh, through the notebook feature okay through the notebook feature so uh, if you have worked on python and python has a popular editor called as the notebook feature okay jupyter notebooks i'm pretty sure you all might have heard of it at least it is a popular editing editor tool okay that is used in order to work with python python uh, software okay so the same thing has been put into azure so i hope everyone knows what is azure let me know in the chat box very quickly okay uh, do you all know what is Azure? Um, or do you all know what is cloud computing? Yes, no, very quickly, please, guys, let me know because I will need to explain certain terms. Okay, otherwise, you'll need to know certain terms. Okay, I hope you all know what is Azure. Okay, what your what about the rest? Okay, okay, no worries. Okay, so I'll just explain those terms very quickly. So when we are talking about uh, Azure, okay, uh, there are certain terms that you need to know. So Azure is basically a cloud platform, okay, where you in where you can create different different services over the internet. Okay, you have AWS, you have GCP, and you have Azure. These are the most popular public cloud. Uh, providers okay and whenever you are creating any service on azure okay whenever you are creating any service on azure you need to have something called as a subscription okay so what is a subscription a subscription is basically like a billing boundary okay it's like a billing boundary that you have okay like we all go to these OTT platforms, correct? We have a free, we can either use it for free or we can pay and use it, correct? So in free, there are certain restrictions that come into picture. You can't see all the content in free. You will have ads that will be coming in, correct? So, and free is not available for the rest of the year. It will be only available for a limited time period, probably for a month or so. Okay. So that is what is basically determining your usage of that OTT platform, whether it's Netflix, Hotstar, Amazon Prime, etc. Right. So, and if you switch to the pay model where you are paying on a monthly basis or a yearly basis, etc. So that is where you don't see much ads, you can access the paid content, some series, some uh, movies, etc. on that OTT platform, right? So that is what is your subscription, right? On the OTT platform. The same thing applied on, on your cloud platform as well. If I have to use the services of the Azure cloud, okay? I need to have a subscription which will determine whether I can use that particular service or not. How much can I use that service? Okay, uh, what is the limit up to which I can use, whether it's a free subscription or it's a paid subscription? Okay, that is what is determined by your subscription. So there can be types of subscriptions. Either you have a free subscription, you have a pay as you go, which is very popular. Okay, so you pay the moment you need something. Okay, you pay for one service and you start using it. Okay, or you can pay for the yearly subscription, monthly subscription. So like I am a Microsoft certified trainer, I'm an MCT. So I get a monthly allowance from Azure, I mean from Microsoft because we are trainers. So we need the, you, we need to use the, cloud platform so we get a monthly allowance of 7000 rupees so that 7000 rupees determines my limit up to which i can use the cloud okay so once i exhaust those 7000 i can't use the cloud any further okay so this is what is the subscription 
the next term that you need to know is called as a resource group okay or it is also termed as rg so what is uh, before we understand resource group let me talk about a region okay so what is a region okay we have multiple um, like i said um, cloud needs to be deployed um, across different regions okay people belong to a lot of different regions or applications or let's say you have developed an ai model okay and you need to dip, you need to make it available to people uh, across different parts of the world right across the globe you want it to be available to them so how do you make them available so you need to deploy it in certain regions and that is what is your region it is like an actual geographical location on the earth i mean on your on earth basically okay it is an actual geographical location on earth where you are um deploying your ai model basically in simple terms okay so that is what is your region okay so whenever you create any service in azure okay you need to have a region where you are deploying that service where you are creating that service okay then the next thing that you need to have is called as a resource group so a resource group is like a container okay it's like a container where uh, you are storing all the uh, resources that you would need for your application okay let's say you need a vm you need a data uh, i'm so sorry you need a database you need a storage account okay all those things instead of scattering it okay and putting and just creating resources it a, a logical way of grouping them is that you put it into one location and that one location or that container is called as a resource group in azure okay it is termed as a resource group in azure okay so it's like a container it's like a place where you group things together okay so that it is not scattered like how whenever you work on a project right whenever you work on a project for and you require certain um i mean you have created you have written codes you have written lots of things uh reporting to the project so rather than creating different folders for that project you kind of create one folder and you put whatever work you have done in that particular folder itself right so that is what is the same concept with your container exact same concept with your container okay so these are the things that you would need as of now in terms of azure to uh, understand okay now moving ahead so in case you want to deploy or train models okay in a uh, context of uh, using python you can definitely do that you can use the notebook feature but you would need to know how to use python i mean you need to know python language how to use the skykit library okay all that you need to know and because normally whenever you work with python okay it uses your laptop uh, physical resources right the ram and everything but let's say you have to scale this application okay you have to provide this application to an end user how do you do that you need much more compute you need much more physical resources that time okay so that's where cloud and python have come in have come together and they provide you that scalability so that you your uh, application or ai model reaches multiple regions but i mean multiple users can consume your ai model okay so that is why uh, you that is why python sdk has also been provided so these are the three different services
that you can have on your Azure Okay, so these are the different this thing. So let me show you how to create a simple using the designer tool. Let me show you how to create the machine learning model. So I'm just going to go to my Azure portal. Let me just log into it. Okay, so I am into my Azure portal. This is how your Azure portal will look like. So let's create a Azure machine learning service. Okay, so for that, you can either search directly from the search bar or you can come to the um, resources tab on your left hand side. You need to pin this or you have this option of create a resource even over here. It will be there. So these are the couple of ways in which you can create a Azure machine learning service. Okay, so I had uh, I have created that earlier. So I'm just going to click on this. So I have one already created. Why do I have this? Okay, I'll just do one thing. So I will. <laughs> okay, so I'll do one thing. I will create one for you all. I'll show how to create one. Very easy. So I'll say a new workspace. So here, if you see, you need a subscription. Which will help, which will allow you to create this particular service. Okay, if you don't have a subscription, okay, you will not be able to create anything in your Azure portal. Okay, so this is one important thing. Then here, if you see, you need a resource group. So a resource group is like a container, like I said, okay, which will have all your resources under one umbrella at one location inside one container. You can say. Okay, so here I'm going to create a new one. And I'll call this as a webinar. Okay, I already have one. Why do I have it? Okay, I will use this only. Let me just delete this. I don't know why I have it. Okay, so I just delete this very quickly. I'll do one thing. I'll create a new one demo. We'll call it as a demo, this thing. And I'll change the region. I don't want for cost saving purposes. I'll go with the East US region. And I will give this a name. So I'll say demo ML workspace. So workspace is again 
the same logic as your container. Okay, uh, it will again help you in grouping things. So, like I told you, there are three different services. You have the designer, auto ML, and Python SDK. So you don't have to create different different workspaces in order to work with all these three services. You can have it under again the same logic as your resource group. Okay, you can put it in one single location, and that is your workspace that is create that you will create. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and say review plus create. And it will do a quick validation. It will check whether I'm allowed to deploy that service in um, Azure or not. Do I have the money or not to create that service? So it has passed that validation. It has done it. And I'll just say create. So this is getting created. So the resource has been created. I will just go to that resource. And I'm going to launch the studio. And the moment you the studio gets launched, you will see that there are three ways. So these are the three services inside that workspace. One is your notebooks, which is used, which is the Python SDK, okay, which you can uh, use in order to train models, deploy models using the Python language. Then you have the automated ML where you can automate the process of deploying a machine learning model. And the uh, third one is the designer tool. Okay, so I'm going to use the designer. Okay, and just go with a new pipeline. So pipeline is like a series of uh, activities that you can sequence out. OK, onto your canvas. So this is how this is your canvas. This is where you will be creating a pipeline. Just before we create a pipeline, OK, we need to create a compute. OK, we need to provide it with a computing power. OK, so I'm going to create that one over here. Let's see. Demo compute. I'll go with the CPU. And I'll go with the uh, I'll go with this one. Um, actually, I'll go with the uh, DS twelve V two with this one. I will go and just say or I'll go with this one only. It's a cheaper option. So I'll just say review plus create and just say create. Because if I have to train a model, and like I said, we need compute, okay, we need a physical resource backing it, without which if I want to scale out my AI application, okay, I will not be able to do that, or ML application in this context, I will not be able to do that. So for those purposes, we need a compute, and there are four ways in which we can scale. I'm sorry, four computes that you can create, that is your compute instance, compute cluster, Kubernetes and attach compute. So if you want to know more about the Azure machine learning studio, you want to study in depth. Okay. 
there is a certification or there is a learning path that Microsoft provides. Okay, and that certification is called as DP100. It is called as Microsoft Certified. One second. Microsoft Certified uh, Azure Data Scientist Associate certification i think it is the name okay so it they give you an associate level certification where you study basically you become a data scientist we all know there are different roles in data so uh, you and in ai you have a data science i mean if i have to talk about the ai roles you have the data scientists whose job is to train and deploy ml models okay and AI engineer is different. You have a data scientist who is different. Okay. So if you want to in case study more about this, okay. You want to know more about it. You can definitely go for this kind this certification. So I'll just share the link with you for future reference. Just give me a minute. Let me share that link with you all. Yeah, so I think now the compute should be ready. Yes, so we can now create a pipeline. So I'll go back to the pipelines or we can all or we can go home and let's go to the designer tool. And here we have one pipeline. Now onto this canvas, we need to, like I said, pipe. it is basically like a pipeline that we create which is nothing but a sequence of activities, okay, that follow, okay. So here we need to put, we need to give those activities and those activities are termed as a component in the uh, designer uh, tool, okay. So the first thing that I need to provide is the data, correct. We need to provide the data from where it has to, because like I told you, ML is something that uses historical data. OK, so we need to provide a uh, data to it. So I'm going to use one of the sample data that Microsoft already has. So I'm going to go with the automobile price data. So I'm going to develop a regression model, as you can see, because we are talking about continuous data or numeric data. So I'm going to create a ML model, regression model. OK, now uh, when I have to just one minute. Um, okay, so now whenever we get the data, okay, uh, the data is not going to be in a perfect format, okay, it is going to be something that needs to be worked on, okay, it needs to be cleaned, it needs to be transformed, okay, we need to perform the data engineering steps. OK, because generally when data is collected, it is collected raw. OK, it is not something that is perfect. We need to make things perfect, right? So it's the same thing with your data. So now we need to perform certain data cleaning steps on top of it. We need to clean the data or we need to transform the data so that when I apply a machine learning algorithm on top of it, OK, there is no discrepancy that comes or interferes in the model predictions. 
okay some because of some missing value because of some column unnecessary column okay it is uh, this term I mean it is it is affecting my prediction I don't want that okay so it is always better that you clean that particular model okay remove those unnecessary columns remove those missing values um, uh, normalize your data wherever possible okay that is termed as cleaning and transformation of your data so let's perform certain steps in in uh, on top of the data so the very first step that i'm going to do is i'm going to remove a column okay i'm going to remove a column and for that we just search for it Okay, so for that, we have a component called as select column. So we are going to select specific columns. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to drag it over here and I'm going to link the two of them. Okay, and now I'm going to say, I'm going to select certain columns. So I'm going to edit and I'm going to say all columns. So include all columns plus. I am going to exclude a specific column. And I'm going to say column names. And over here, if you see the moment I say column names, I get all the output. I mean, I get all the column names in my data set that are there. So I'm going to go with normalized losses. I don't want this column. So it's what it's going to do. It's going to include all the columns except the normalized losses columns. That means it is going to drop that column. It is going to remove that column. So save and collapse this. I don't need it. Okay, the next transformation step that I'm going to perform is that I am going to clean the missing data. Generally, whenever we have um, missing data, okay, it is re. I mean, it is um, it is substituted or it is replaced, okay, with uh, either the mean or the median of the data. OK, whatever is the mean and because this is a continuous data, it is a numeric data. It is going to be replaced with either the mean or the median of your data. OK, so that is how you uh, the data is replaced. OK, so we are going to clean the missing values. So I'm going to take this as the next step and connect this to this. And I'm going to edit the parameters. OK, so here I'm going to say include again all columns. And I am. Going to clean all the. Just say OK, and in the clearing mode, OK, I am going to say. Uh, Actually, I'm going to keep it away little. Yeah, I think. Um, so we are going to go with the remove entire row. So in case what does this do if in case it encounters a missing value in a specific row, it will remove the entire row. OK, it will clean the entire row. So this is what I am doing over here. So I'll just do that. And then now I've done the cleaning steps. Sorry, I performed the transformation and the cleaning steps. Now I'm going to train the model. OK, and before we train the model, OK, we need to split the data OK, into something called as training and testing. Uh, now why train and why test? OK, so, out of, so we have a data OK that we have provided. The entire data set, I'm not going to use that for training. What I'm going to do is some part of that data I'm going to use and I'm going to train my algorithm on top of that data, apply my algorithm on top of that data and some part I'm going to use 
on that very data to test whether that algorithm is working or not. So that is why we split the data. We separate the data into two data sets. One is called as a training data set and the other is called as a testing data set. Why do we do that? Because when I am training a model, when I'm applying uh, one part of the data I'm using in order to train, I need to check right whether it is working or not. That data is, I mean, that algorithm, what kind of output am I getting on top of that algorithm? Is it giving me, is my actual value, sorry, is my predicted value and the actual value the same? Is my model performing well? If I need to test that, I need to do it on the testing model. Correct? I need to perform it on top of the testing model. So we, that is why we split the data. Okay, now if I have to split the data, I have a transformation ready for it or as split data. So here, if you see, I'm not doing any coding. I'm not performing. I'm not writing steps of coding. Okay, I don't need to know Python language for it. I'm just dragging that activity that I need. Okay, and I am just connecting the activities that are there. So this is what you are going to do. So here I'm going to connect this clean data set to the split data and I'm going to split the data. So the general um, ratio of training and testing is 70, 30. 70% 70 you put for training and 30% of the data you use for testing. This is the general division that you do. On, uh, yeah, you split the data in this manner. So here I'm going to go with 70%. So it is going to be 0.7. Okay, that means 70% of my data will be used for training the model and 30% of my data will be used for testing the model. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. And now on top of this, I'm going to train the model. So I need to use one of the algorithms. So we have a component for it. So if you see here, there are 19 machine learning algorithms. So I'm going to use the linear regression. Yeah, one more thing I forgot to mention over here, the algorithms that you can use. So when you're working with a regression model or you're creating a regression model, you can use different algorithms. The popular one is the linear regression. Okay, the next one is the polynomial regression. And in terms of Okay, so now in terms of your classification model. You have a lot of algorithms. You have the logistic regression, which uses the sigmoid function. Okay, uh, it will use that S curve that is there. So logistic regression, you have the decision tree. Decision tree also comes in the regression as well. Okay, you have, sorry, decision tree, you have a uh, random forest. Um, apart from that, you can, actually, I will not mention that over here. Yeah, you have uh, boosting and all the not come. Yeah, but these are the popular ones. That you can use. You have decision tree classifier, you have decision tree regressor. Okay, you have random forest regression model, you have random forest uh, classification model, all of them. But in classification, this is the most popular one. And in clustering, you have the K means. Yeah, you have the K means clustering, which is a popular model that you can use. 
Okay, so these are some of the popular algorithms that you can use. So for a regression, since this is a regression type of data, so I'm going to use the linear regression model, a simple one, which uses the uh, our simple mathematics of uh, slope the simple slope math, I mean, uh, formula that is y is equal to mx plus c, right? This is the formula that we use in order to calculate the slope. So that's what it is going to use. And to this, now I am going to use the training model that will be over here. And I'm going to drag it and I'm going to put it over here. Okay, so here it will have the untrained model and this will have the 70% of the data that is there. Okay, that is what it will use. Okay, it will use the 70%. This is what it will use. So now here we, like I said, supervised machine learning. This is a part of the supervised machine learning. And in supervised machine learning, there is a target or a label column where the machine knows, okay, this is the actual value, okay. So in when we are training the model, we need to specify that we need to specify the label column, okay. This is the label column. So in our case, this is the price is the label column, right? So I'm going to mention price, okay, which is our label column, okay. It is so you have to be very careful. When you mention this name, okay, just I'll, for the moment, I'll just cancel this. So if, if you're not sure, please go to the data, okay, go to this data and you can even preview the data if you see here and I can expand this and please check the name of the column. It is all in lower case. So uh, this is highly case sensitive. So you have to be very careful whenever you enter the name of the label column. Okay, so here I'm going to say price, say save, and just collapse this. Okay, so this is how you will train the model. Okay, now the next thing that you need to put is you need to score the model. Okay, there are certain performance parameters that are used in order to uh, check whether your model is working fine or not. Okay, whether it is giving you the optimal result or not. Okay, for that, we use the scoring and evaluating uh, fields. For that, you have this. I'm going to use the score model. And to this, I'm going to give the trained model. Okay, and I'm going to give the testing data set, then 30% that is there. Okay, I'm going to attach the next part so that it will test, see whether it's working on the remaining testing data or not, giving you the output or not. Okay, so it will do a comparison. Okay, on the training model, what kind of prediction I'm getting on the testing model, what kind of prediction for the testing data set, what kind of prediction I am getting. So this is what it will do. And then finally, I need to evaluate the model, like I said, we need to test the performance. Okay. And finally, this is what I'm going to do. Okay. So now we need to run this pipeline. Okay. But before that, we need to configure and we need to provide it with the compute that we have created. So I'll come to runtime settings and I will select the compute instance that I've created. And I will select this and just say review plus submit. And we need to give a experiment name. So I'll just say prize experiment. Okay, because we are predicting the price. Okay, so in a designer, it gives you an option of like how in um Whenever in a science experiment, okay, we kind of do multiple experiments, right, for the same thing, right, for the same uh, project, 
okay we are doing multiple or we do model versionings right we write different different versions of our code okay so the same thing you can like if you want to do on top of your uh, model you can do that okay and you can put it under one experiment so that is why you need to specify this experiment name it, that's what it basically is doing and i'm just going to say review plus create and just say submit so it has submitted okay and now i'm going to save the pipe so the pipeline has also been saved and now it will start the execution of this pipeline so here if you see it has submitted the job and now it will start executing it so the pipeline has been submitted now it will start running so i'll just go to the job details so that you can see how it will be executed
So the job now the pipeline has been successfully executed. So now if you have to see the output, you can just double click on this and you can see you can evaluate the model. OK, so you get these. Uh, parameters like in a regression model, we have um, uh, the RMSC score, we have the uh, R square, okay, all those coefficient of determination that is nothing but yeah, um, R square or you have RMSC. So these are the uh, fact, I mean, performance matrix that are used in order to determine how well is your model uh working right so here if you see it is 0.86 okay it's okay and your rmse score is uh this which is around this so you can use these matrix and determine okay is this a good algorithm to use on top of my model do i need a different algorithm okay you can do comparison of two models you can evaluate the two models so here that is why you if you see you have another option of adding another data set. So you could probably create another. You could add another algorithm and you can train that algorithm and all those things you can do over here and add it to this evaluate model. So it will give you the best performing algorithm out of the two. OK, so this is how you can use the designer tool, a very simple tool. And once you have completed this, you can publish this tool. You can create something called as a batch inference or a real time inference. You can create endpoints out of it, which you can give it to the end user. OK, so for that, you can either create a batch inference, which is like an uh, you send data in terms of batches or OK, you can create an online online endpoint, which is like a real time endpoint. OK, where you have real time data coming in and, the, and at that very moment, you can predict the outcome. OK, so the moment the customer enters its values, enters its data, the model will predict and give the output immediately. Or you can do it in terms of batches. The like how credit cards are. I mean, your credit card is I mean, uh, you did. I mean, your credit card payments are done. It is not done altogether. It, the data is collected for the day and then it is put into batches and then it will you know, do the uh, processing of the credit card uh, data. OK, so this is how you can do even in your. On top of your model, so you feel that this algorithm is performing the best. You can pick this up and you can apply it and you can use this and create a real time or a batch endpoint. OK, so this is how you can use a simple machine learning model. So now let's do one thing. Let's take a break. I've been talking for quite a, f I mean, for an, almost two hours. So after the break, we will see the deep learning part of Azure. Okay, How, what are the services on Azure related to deep learning? Okay, and after that, uh, I will show you one small demo related to the Azure AI services. One demo, one simple demo. I will be showing you. Okay, so let's take a twenty-minute break. I'll just start the clock. Uh, guys, I shared AI 900 batches. Please uh, follow the step and get your batches.
Also, guys, put done after redeem your batches.
Hello everyone. I hope you all are back. Please put a yes if you all are back. So I can see people uh, don't know how to redeem the badge. So I'll explain the steps to you all. How can you redeem the badges? Okay, let me just. Let me do one thing. Let me just share my screen. Okay. So first of all, you have to copy the URL that we have shared with you in the chat. Okay, use that URL itself. No other URL you're supposed to use because it has a code in, embedded in it. OK, so just paste this URL in an incognito or a private window. OK, and just do this. <laughs> so now this will prompt you to sign in to the Microsoft uh, account. OK, here if you don't have a Microsoft account, please create one. OK, otherwise, if you have one, if you already have a Microsoft account, just use that. So I already have a Microsoft account created that is either on Outlook or Live uh, or Hotmail. Either of those domain names you can use and you can create an account. So I'm going to use my personal account that I have. And once you do that. You will get a pop up like this. OK, which will have the code embedded in it. OK, and once you get this pop up, just click on redeem. OK, it will redeem the badges for this particular training or this webinar that you are attending. OK, and now once it has done, go to the profile. OK, and in the profile section, you will see lots of badges that will come like this. OK, I already have a lot of badges. But we don't want you to share the screenshot of that. So uh, Vidya, Tarun, if you have completed, we request you to share the screenshot in the chat box. OK, so you have to go to courses and in courses you will see a single badge like this called as Microsoft as your AI fundamentals. OK, you have to click on the print icon. And you have to share this screenshot with us. You have to share a screenshot in the chat box, which will look like this. So please do that. This is what you are supposed to do. And copy the URL that we have shared with you. If you don't have a Outlook Live or an Hotmail ID, I would request all of you all to create one. OK, and once you all create, you will get a pop up of redeeming the code. Just click on redeem. And once that is done, you have to go to the profile section. So this is your profile section. And in your profile section, you have achievements. OK. In your achievements, you have modules, learning paths, courses. You have to go to the courses section and select this one badge that you are going to get. Just select this and sorry, so click on the print icon. Not go to that. OK. Just select on, I mean, click on the print icon and share this screenshot with us. So, Vidya Tarun, please uh, do it that, this way. Yes, and you can definitely share this badge on your LinkedIn profile. How you can do it, I'll just show it to you all. So, can you see you have this option next to the print icon? You have uh, the share icon. OK, you have to click on this icon and you can share on any of the social media platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. OK, you can share this badge on your on the social media platform. Uh, Nikita, we were on a break five minutes ago, so we, I did not teach anything. We were just on a break. I just thought about how can you redeem the badges uh, that Archie has shared. OK, you just have to copy the link in a private browser or a incognito win window. OK, and you will uh, you will get a pop up of signing in into your Microsoft account. You, if you don't have one Microsoft account, create one. OK, otherwise, if you have an Outlook ID or a live ID or a Hotmail ID, you can use that account itself and you will get a pop up of redeeming something like this. It will look. 
something a pop up like this will come you have to click on redeem and you have to redeem the badge okay and it will uh, reflect in the achievement section and achievements in uh, inside achievements under courses you should see a badge of of the with the name microsoft uh, Microsoft Azure AI Fundamentals. And if you see, you have this print icon. You just have to click on this and you have to share a screenshot like this. Yeah, Tarun, whatever uh, screenshot is there, just share, it's fine. We just want to see you have redeemed the uh, badges or not. So it's okay. Okay, is this clear, guys? So this is how you are supposed to redeem the badges. Okay, so let's uh, do. Let's just look at some presentations before we move to the next topic. So, whatever presentations were there in machine learning, let's just cover that. So we talked about machine learning. Okay. We talked what is machine learning. We did the types of machine learning. And then we talked about how can you use the Azure ML Studio, the designer tool, in order to uh, train your model. How can you use an algorithm? What is training data set? What is testing data set? Correct. This is all that we have seen. <laughs> okay, now let's move to the next part of uh, machine learning. You can call it like a subset of AI. I have already explained this. Let's understand what is deep learning. Okay, how is deep? How how does deep learning actually work? Okay, what is deep learning, etc. All of that. Let's just understand how you can use deep learning. So deep learning is something that is an advanced form of machine learning. Okay, machine learning, like I said, is a little primitive. It uses statistics. It uses mathematics. Okay, it has set uh, functions. Okay, we have seen that it uses certain functions and it trains a model based or around that function. Correct. So. Yeah, uh, Piyush, uh, the badge will be available in the achievement section of your profile. Achievements, go to achievements, and in achievements, on the right hand side, you have courses. So next to the courses, uh, inside the courses, you will find the badge that is there. Okay. It is Microsoft uh, Azure AI Fundamentals. That is the name of the badge. So you can see Vig, uh, Vigya has given us a screenshot. This is what we are expecting. Okay, so this is the exact screenshot that you have to share. Okay, moving ahead. Um, yeah, let's understand how does deep learning work. Okay, so I told you deep learning is nothing but a subset of machine learning. And whereas machine learning uses functions. Okay, your Deep learning basically mimics your our human brain, okay? And our human brain is full of neurons which are interlinked with each other, which communicate with each other through uh, electrochemical activity, okay? So now I will pick up this very concept of biological neuron and apply it to an artificial neuron, and that is nothing but your deep learning. OK, so when I am when I want to do vision services, OK, when I want to perform uh, any AI, Azure AI services, which I will talk about after we study the deep learning, the same concept has been used. Now, it, when I want to do a, a speech, I want to do a facial recognition. I want to uh, classify images. OK, I want to do an image 
uh, I want to do a vision service. I want to classify images, whether this is a <clears throat> whether this is a uh, whether this is a dog or is this a cat? Is this a circle? Is this a rectangle or is this a triangle? What kind of an image is this? If I want to predict that, I want to find out what is the output. We use uh, like how we are being trained right from our childhood. We have been told this is how you're supposed to write. And this is what we have been told. OK, this is a dog. This is a cat. We have been shown images and number of images we have been shown. Right. This is of a dog, of a cat, of a mountain, of a cloud, etc. And based on that experience, OK, we have come to know. OK, we know now how to classify a dog, how to classify a cat. Right, because we have been trained since childhood, the same concept has been picked up in deep learning. OK, and using the same network structure, the neural network structure of our brain. OK, we can train a model. OK, now let's see how does your neural network work? OK, let's understand how does the deep learning uh, uh, work? So I'm going to explain very briefly. OK. So I told you that our brain is made up of uh, neural networks. OK, so let's say I have three images. OK, one that of a rectangle, sorry, one that of a rectangle, the other of a circle and the other of a triangle. Okay, let's say I have been given these three images and I have been told that I have to predict, okay, that this that this image that I am seeing is a circle or is it a rectangle or is it a triangle okay so now what what we do i give you i'll give you this image and i'll tell you okay this is a circle right you uh and like let's say after one year two years after rigorous training okay i again give you an image which is of a circle so for you it will be now easy to predict yeah this is a circle why because you are being trained with countless number of images Right. OK, this is a circle. So the same concept we are going to apply to the artificial neural network. OK, like I told you, so what it will do, it will take this circle. So I'll take this circle. OK. And now when we feed an image, OK, when we feed an image, to the circle. It is divided. I'll take a rectangle. OK, so whenever we feed an image or whenever we also see an image, OK, the artificial neuron, what it will do is it is going to divide. OK, it is going to divide your image because we all know an image is made up of um, pixels, right? There are pixels that come into picture. And whenever we are also talking about how good the uh, image is, we are basically talking about the pixels, right? So your image is divided into a 28. That's them doing this.
so your image is divided into a pixel size of 28 by 28. Okay, your image will be divided into a pixel size of 28 by 28. So this is how it will be divided. So every length and breadth, sorry, in terms of a square, it will be a size. Okay, so here, if I do a multiplication of 28 by 28, it will amount to a total of 784 pixels. Okay, it is going to amount to a total of 784 pixels. So these 784 pixels, okay, are the it is divided by 28 by 28, which is a total of 784 pixels. So what it will do now our new this will feed or this will be fed to the neural network that you have created. Okay, so in a neural network, there are three layers that come into picture. Okay, there are three layers that come. The first layer just draw it very quickly. Okay, you will have three layers and the very first layer is your input layer. Okay, so input layer again in your uh, neural network, like the name says neural, it will have neurons. So here also you are going to have neurons. Okay, and this becomes your first layer. This is your input layer, okay? And to this input layer, okay, these pixel values that are there. So now there are a total of how much? 784 pixels, okay? So to every neuron in your input layer. So now what will happen? There will be around 784 neurons, okay, that will be there. And to every new neuron, okay, these pixel values will be allocated. These pixel values will be allocated, okay? So what will happen? So the first pixel will go to the first neuron. So this is your first neuron. So it will have a uh, pixel value, which will look like um, x1, okay? This will be x, so this will get the second pixel, so this will be x2, this will be x3, and then this will go up to x784 or I think 83, okay? So this is how your new pixels will be divided, okay, across the input layer. So your very first layer in a neural architecture will be the input layer. So these pixel values that are associated with okay, all of them will be fed with a pixel value. So the image will be divided and that image will be given to these neurons and the first layer that receives the neurons is called as the input layer in your artificial neural network. Now, once it has received these neurons, okay, the next layer that comes into picture is called as a hidden layer. Okay, 
there is a hidden layer. Now the hidden layer can be of n number of layers. Okay, there can be n number of layers to your hidden layers. So again, it will be a layer full of neurons. Okay, it will have full neurons again to it, which will represent like this. which will represent like this and this will become your hidden layer. Okay. This will become your hidden layer. So let me just move this a little this side. And this hidden layer, okay, will have multiple layers within it. Okay, it will have multiple layers within it. So this is your hidden layer. Okay, so now what will happen next? is that every neuron okay, of, of your input layer will be connected to the neuron within the hidden layer. Okay, and when it is establishing a connection, okay, it is called as a channel. Okay, it is called as a channel and every channel will have some weight associated to it. Okay, so every channel, so this is like a channel, It will. So I'll just show it for one neuron. You, I, I hope you all will understand for the other neurons then. Just one minute. So every neuron from the hidden layer is linked to every neuron that is occurring in the hidden layer. Okay. And I'll, I guess I will do it for one neuron. So this is how it will look and similarly it will do it will be for your second neuron for the third neuron for the uh, the last neuron. OK, that is there. So now, like I said, these are like weighted channels. OK, they are weighted channels and to every neuron in the hidden layer, there will be something called as a bias. OK, there will be something called as a bias that will be associated. So it will be like B1. B2, okay, B3, likewise, okay, and this will be whatever value it comes to. Even here, it will be again a bias will be there because in the hidden layer, it will have multiple this thing. So it will have biases attached to it, okay. The same thing here. And here also, every neuron will be interlinked with the other the same way. 
okay like how this has been connected okay now along with the biases like i said this also has some weight so these will have some values okay some values will be associated with every channel that comes into picture so point 8 point 6 anything i mean it can be any value so these values are something that you determine okay these are values that you that we can't say it is something that you have to decide how many layers are you going to require that is why when we talk about training a deep learning model or even a gen ai model if i have to train okay it takes years for the model to be trained because you have to determine the bias you have to determine how many layers of hid, i mean how many hidden layers are you going to require okay what if you don't get the appropriate output that you need there is a mismatch you are predicting a circle and the output is coming to be a triangle right so there is a conflict so you will have to change these biases you will have to change these biases you will have to change these weights on the channels okay so that is why it is also costly to train a, a deep learning model because it is in your hand okay it is up to you what you want to decide okay it is again you will have to know mathematics for it you need to know i mean statistics for it in order to determine okay how much weight to add to what okay and how many how many hidden layers are you going to require okay so let's say this is point 2 this is point 1 again like some values you can just give it a point 3 okay so every channel will have a value associated and the first neuron in the first layer of the neurons in the hidden layer will have some biases allocated to it okay it will have some biases allocated to it now using this okay using this it will create a formula which will be something like now let's take, talk about the first neuron okay so what it will do it will do x1 multiplied by the weighted channel okay plus the next neuron it will take so whatever is being linked with bias 1 with the neuron of the first hidden layer okay it will take now let's say x2 has some weight has channels and the first channel has the weight of let's say point 2 so it will do x2 multiplied by point 2 okay and n number of operations like that and towards the end it will add the bias to it so of course it's not going to stop at x1 x2 it will be have x3 x4 and so on and so forth so i'm not writing that thing over here so this formula that gets generated okay is some is called as the activation function okay this is called as the activation function okay the so this is like a uh, function that is generated okay i'll just explain the font size okay so this is what is the uh, activation function and this activation function basically determines the result of your or is basically something that is responsible to give you the output okay so what it will do now this activation function will be applied to the neurons in your output layer okay so your output layer will have the three things okay which is nothing but the triangle we have these three things okay so what will happen to every hidden layer okay every hidden layer there will be an act activation function that will be allocated will be applied sorry and this will go on till the second last layer of the hidden layer that is there okay this particular activation or whichever 
yeah this will be applied to every layer so here at this first layer this is the activation function that is applied it will be applied to the next layer again to the next layer again to the next layer till it reaches the second last layer and whichever neuron in the second last layer it corresponds to the input digit is similar to the input digit okay that you have applied over here okay that kind of that will trigger that particular neuron will correspond to the input layer and that will determine your output layer or the output will be determined according to that so this is how a, your deep learning models actually work okay a, a, a weighted channel is created to every weighted channel there is some uh, value or a weight that will be applied okay out of that you will generate an activation function and whichever neuron responds to that activation function will determine the output so this is your output layer and now it sees that okay this is the this is the neuron that is being generated so i just increase the line width okay it is saying that okay this is the neuron that is corresponding to the output neuron okay and this will then tell okay this is a circle so this is your output layer okay and whichever neuron in the second last layer corresponds so this will go up till the second last layer and whichever neuron corresponds to the input layer similar to the input digit input layer okay this is how it will determine okay this is a circle and it will produce the output over there okay so this is how your deep learning model works and like i said okay you need to continuously what if it is not determining a circle it has determined the neuron that has been activated is of a triangle which is matching to the triangle input layer okay in that situation you need to change the weights you need to change the biases and it's a continuous process okay it's a continuous process okay that is why training of a deep learning model takes a lot of time compared to a machine learning model because you have to keep on changing the weights you have to keep on changing the biases that are associated in the hidden layer decide how many hidden layers you need okay and it takes time and that is why open ai didn't come immediately they were training for a lot of time the gen ai models that are there the llm models okay that are large language models okay it takes time and to work on such a large data okay it is going to take time so that is why it is expensive to train a deep learning model and very difficult okay to train the models that are there so this is how a deep learning model basically works so there are three layers input layer hidden layer and the output layer so your hidden layer is where you are actually working okay you divide the image into pixels okay Uh, general format of the pixel is twenty eight by twenty eight, and you get a total of seven eighty four pixels, which are allocated to the neurons in the first layer, that is your hidden layer, and then they are passed to the uh, next layer, that is there. That is your hidden layer, and then whichever neuron triggers gets activated. You correspond it to the input digit, and you get the output of your image. whether it's a circle it's a triangle it's a rectangle whether it's a dog or it's an image oh, sorry it's a cat sorry okay you get the output from the layer just a minute okay so this is the concept behind the image i mean your deep learning models how they are basically trained so this is what we are i explained to you and whenever also like whenever uh, as your or any of the cloud services they say we have models so this is how they train the model okay they 
uh, basically on Azure, whenever you have to work with a deep learning model or you want to work with a machine learning model, it is already being trained. You're just using those pre-trained models and you're providing your images and you're training that model to your images. Okay. Because like I said, training a model from scratch takes a lot of time. Takes a lot of effort, takes a lot of cost. I mean, you need a lot of money as well, okay, in order to train that model. So it is always, I mean, uh, in order to uh, save the cost and all of for those XYZ reasons, you use the pre trained models that are there, okay? So this is how the deep learning model works. So this is what I told you the process. Now, if I want to use the models, okay, deep learning, if I want to work with, we have certain Azure AI services that help us do that. Okay, so let's understand some of the Azure AI services that are there, okay, in which will help you work with, let's say, images, which will help you work with text, with speech, with um, with documents. Okay, with uh, even open AI services, that is the chat, chat GPT, you have chat, okay, you have images, DALI, okay, all those services are now available on the Azure AI as well, on the Azure AI services. And I'm going to show you one of how to create a simple service and I already have a code written for it, okay, which is a translation service that we are going to see how you can translate a particular text, I mean, speech into a desired language of your choice. So this is what we are going to see. So let me just walk you all through the presentations of how many services are there in the Azure AI. Okay, And later I'll show you the demo of how you can use the translation services. So we are going to use the Python language to do that. Okay. So the very first service that you can use is the computer vision service. So what is the computer vision? So like I said, you want to classify images. Okay, you want to train the model. You want to classify images, whether this image is of a penguin or is it an orange? Is it a banana? Is it an apple? Okay, you want to classify those images. You can use the computer vision service. Okay, so it uses the deep learning concept itself. It's just that there is another layer called as a convolute, convoluted layer, okay, where you apply a set of filters, okay, like I told you that an image is divided into pixels, right? So it is, uh, the pixel has a range of 0 to 2 to 255, okay, it uses that concept and it uses the three colors, that is your red, green, blue, okay? And it will uh, divide that image in that format. And on top of this image, it will apply a filter, okay? Which consists of kernels, okay? Some filter, so it will be a filter which will be like this, okay? And it will pass the filter on top of every value, on every part of that image. Okay, and this image that you get, it is a convolved image. It is called as a convolved image. And once you get this image, okay, so we talked about the deep learning model, correct, how it works, then it is applied to that same deep learning model. So instead of directly applying the image, okay, it will apply a convolved image, okay, where a filter, a kernel of filter will be applied on top of your image. Okay, which is something like this. Let me just go back. Okay, so a filter will be applied. Once you apply that filter, you'll get a convolved image. And that convolved image is now passed to your deep learning neural network. So here, 
the neural network is called as a convolutional neural network because the image that you are passing it is a convolved image which has been applied filters have been applied correct and once that has been applied so it becomes a convolutional this thing and then the same steps like how we saw in the deep learning the exact same steps are applied and it is then used okay so then it will classify whether it's an apple it's a banana it's a um, an orange okay it will based on that the same concept will be applied over here okay so as your machine learning like i said has pre trained models for it you just have to use their models just provide your images train the model multiple times okay tell the model this is a orange this is a banana this is an apple okay so the model will understand like a supervised model it will be okay because you are pre training it you are telling okay this is an apple this is a banana this is an orange okay it will understand and now if you put a, a testing data to it some other images it will now be able to understand will be able to predict whether it is a apple or a banana or a orange okay so this is how it will do so instead of you training a model from scratch as your has given you okay through the is your ai vision services okay computer vision you can train a model okay so if i have to now use it so you can see how the is your ai vision which will help you classify the images okay here also it can be used for facial recognition to determine faces to determine or read text from the images detect people generate image captions this is a cycle or is this a a, a car etc if you want to do that classification i want to label them okay you can even do that you can detect objects within your image okay all these things you can do once you use the ai vision service okay then like i said you can detect faces you have the face service in the ai vision service which will help you detect the face even if the face is blurred somebody is wearing a glass okay somebody is i mean is wearing sunglasses or spectacles etc the angle of the face is different okay it's from a different angle probably somebody is born a mask okay in covid time if you recall we were all wearing masks right on our face okay so if i have to detect if that person is the one i'm looking for even though he has worn a mask no worry we can still do that okay we can even remove the noise at times that is there okay we can remove the noise and still we can detect the person if there is any obstruction okay occlusion is nothing but if there is a a uh, uh, object blocking the face okay you can still make use you can still detect the face okay identify who that person is okay the other service that you can use is also called as the ocr or the object or the optical character recognition okay you can let's say somebody has a um, a shopping list you can see her in the image okay and from that shopping list i want to make out what that person has written because generally it is difficult to understand handwritings right every every one of them all of us have different handwritings correct so if i have to determine that it is very difficult at times correct so we can train the model using the ocr that is optical character recognition okay uh, there is a special api that you can use on top of that and you can you know submit the list okay a special list that i mean whatever you have created okay or written okay or even if it's a printed script i mean that is also fine you can detect the output using the ocr that is there so this is another service that you can api stands for application programming interface programming languages like python java okay so they are a special api is provided in order to use this particular service in azure okay so to to put it simply api is nothing but the programming languages that we know so here there is a different language that you need to use different way or because because you have to try and interpret the handwriting 
right? So that is why uh, different uh, approach that you need to use. Okay. So this is your is your AI vision service where you can use the OCR in order to understand or read the text. Okay, if it's written in an uh, I mean it's an handwritten text or a printed text. Okay, so this was your AI vision services where you have the facial recognition services, you have the image classification or the AI vision service that is there. Okay. So this is one of the Azure AI services. The next Azure AI services that is there is your is your NLP. So NLP is Basically, like if you want to do, I give you the example in the morning, right? The first example that I want to find out whether this feedback that a customer has given me is a positive feedback or is it a negative, a negative feedback? Okay, if I want to find that out, we need to understand the sentiment behind that feedback, right? And if I have to understand the sentiment for that, we need to use the NLP. So NLP is something that will help us understand that uh, understand that text, understand the sentiment behind that text. Okay, so that is what is natural language processing. So whenever we are uh, writing a text, okay, uh, like I, I want to analyze a text. Okay, I want to uh, understand whether the reaction is positive, negative. Okay. Uh, do a conversational AI, okay? Develop a conversational AI like a bot, okay? I want to develop a bot. We use the NLP that is there. So it does something called as tokenization, okay? Where it will create tokens. And I think um, similar concept has been used in your prompt engineering of generative AI. So if you like, you write prompts. Correct. You write prompts. So whenever there is a, a a prompt written, it is tokenized. Okay, the words are broken down into tokens. Okay, and wherever there is a phrase or a word, so it will link to a common phrase. Like you have universe. Let's say you have used universal. Okay, so it will link it to universe or something, and it will try and under, interpret according to that. Okay, and it will give you the output. Okay, so here you are basically creating like a language model and language model and use for text analysis. Uh, no, you don't assign whatever, like let's say you have written a sentence. So whichever word comes first, that word will be given the text token one, okay, value one. Then the next word will be given uh, another token. So it's, it follows it like sequentially, I could say, okay. Uh, yeah, so that is how tokens are basically allocated. Okay. And if the same token is repeating, so I think the value will be then allocated. I mean, the same value will be allocated. Okay. So let's say I say we choose to go to the moon. This is a phrase I'm using. Let's say, okay. We choose to, sorry for the handwriting. To the moon. Okay, so what it will do once we give it to this language model, it will. Uh, so the weights also is up to you. Like you have to do a lot of permutation combinations. Okay, so what it will do over here, it will give V a token of one. It will give choose the token of two. Okay, two again here it is repeating, so it will get a token of three. Okay, and here this will go to four.
okay and here now what will happen two is coming again okay so two is coming again so like i said when the word repeats okay so the same token is allocated to that particular word or to that particular yeah to this particular word so two will be used i mean three will be used again if you see so this will be three again okay then this will be five and then this will be six. So an array will be created, like an array will be created, like you will have one, you will have two, you will have three, you will have four. Again, three will come because two is repeating. Okay, then you will have five and then you will have six. So like this, an array kind of a thing will be created and then this will be passed to I mean, this is then it will be analyzed, then it will segregate. OK, are these words, are these top words? So like the uh, and OK, it all these are called as top words. OK, and then you will have text, something called as text normalization. OK, uh, then like I said, there are some words that are repeating. I mean, are some words that are, you know, classified like universal or universe. OK, so like that they will be put into categories and then accordingly it will try and understand the this thing. OK, understand the uh, text behind it. And then, of course, it will do something called as frequency anal analysis. Now, what do I mean by frequency analysis? Count the number of occurrences. OK, each token has. So here, if you see two is coming twice, correct? It will. Uh, so it's like a frequency analysis it will do. So it will assign something called as bigrams to the words. OK, it will assign something called as a bigram. So it is termed as actually n grams. How many times is the token uh, you know, repeated? And based on that, it will call it as bigrams, monogram, polygram or whatever. Like all those terms will be used and it will do a frequency analysis. So it's, it's a lot in depth. OK, uh, we don't have time. I don't have time to explain that, but just an overview. This is how it will do. And now if I want to do the NLP in Azure, these are the services that I can use. OK, in order to perform NLP. So language, you have a language uh, service in Azure. OK, that is language detection. You can do free phrase extraction, extract the key, uh, key phrases. OK, that come. OK, then you have sentiment analysis, like I told you, customer feedback. OK, uh, then uh, questioning like the no question bot. If you want to create a bot, you can definitely do that. Then you have the speech service that is text to speech, speech to text, all those translation services related to speech. OK, identify the language OK, behind the text okay what uh what language has the person spoken okay all that things you can use then you have translator services translate from one language to the other okay all these come under the nlp okay it is termed as the language service in azure okay so these are the services so the first service is your is your ai language service so there is a studio dedicated okay so now your if I want to an analyze this text, so like I said, again, tokens are used. OK, they are divided into number of words. OK, and then, of course, you kind of first of all determine what kind of a language this is, what language has been used over here. OK, then the second that you determine is the sentiment behind the language. And how do you come to know is by the word wonderful. OK, so you come to know that, OK, this is a positive feedback. OK, and then finally you use the key phrase that is the wonderful vacation, which determines, OK, this is the. Uh, you know, this is the key phrase from which I came to know the sentiment behind the text. So I had a wonderful vacation in France. So first of all, you determine or you identify the language that is predominant. OK, I can even say this in German language. 
okay uh, if i mean i know german but, but i will not uh, talk about it but you have to understand which is the base language that has been used then you will use you will go and understand the sentiment behind that text okay rate that sentiment and identify the key phrase based on which you have got this sentiment so this is how you can an analyze the text okay and then you have certain other entities that you need to uh, like location entity you can have a name entity etc okay all that things you can use in the language service then you can develop a QA like FAQ. Like I told you, you can have an FAQ system. Okay, you can have a knowledge base where you create like a database of questions that can be frequently asked. So instead of having a person sitting and understand answering those questions, okay, you can have like a chat box, okay, that you can create, okay, which will answer those frequently asked questions. Like you go to a a uh, travel agency website and you want to you know uh, do a hotel booking or a flight booking okay those are some of the faqs that can come right whenever you want to do all of that so why keep a person okay i can just interact with that bot that bot will go to that database that you have created your uh, knowledge base that you have created over here go see, search for the question Okay, similar question and come back and give you the answer. So this is the language services. Okay, so you create a bot service. Then you can even have a conversational service. Okay, like how we have our Alexa, we have the Google Pixel. Okay, where we would just give a command. Right, there would be, we would just give a command, Alexa, turn on the light, Alexa, turn on the music and switch off the light, switch off the AC. Okay, so if I want to create like an inter, I mean, I want to create a model like that, you can do that in your language services as well. It is called, it is called as a conversational language understanding. Okay, it was uh, termed that. It is the, uh, there is a studio dedicated for it. It is called as a conversational language understanding studio i mean that is the term so how does this work it has three primary components first is the utterance so what is the utterance it is a phrase that the user speaks about so like i said switch on the light or turn on the music turn on the light these are utterances or phrases that you are uttering or you are speaking or you are commanding right the next thing that the bot or sorry, the model will pick up is called as the entity. Now, what is the entity? It is something that is specific in that utterance. It could be light, it could be music, it could be uh, life, I mean, AC. Okay, it is something that is an item that you are referencing to in that utterance. Like I said, you uh, let's say you have an you have Alexa, right? They all have uh, seen what Alexa can do. Right, it's like a home automation uh, tool. I mean, a uh, 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 tool that is there. So it uses this conversational language understanding itself. So here, the moment you give a utterance to Alexa, Alexa switch on or I mean, turn on the music. So music becomes the entity for it. Okay, music will become the entity for it. Okay, or switch on the light, switch on the fans, switch on the AC fan, AC. Um, light, they all become the entity in your utterance. And then the next is your intent, your desired action. What do you want to do? Okay. Uh, with the light, with the music, with the um, AC or with the fan. What is your intent? Okay. Your action. So like here, you want to switch on the light. So on is your intent. Okay. So turn on the music on switch off the light off is your intent okay so this is how it works it takes three things three components utterances entity and intent okay so this is your language services that you can use and then you have the speech recognition okay speech service also because speech has to convert it to text like i told you speech uh I am speaking in one language. I want you to translate it to text. 
Okay, I'm speaking now. I'm giving you all a webinar. Let's say you are not understanding what I am speaking. Let's say you want to see a caption of what I am speaking about. Okay, so you need to have a speech recognition to text conversion. So that is also taken care in the speech service of Azure AI. Okay, so it will do a speech to text translation. Okay, it has ready made models. You don't have to kind of um, create any model. Okay, so this is the next service that is there. Yeah, so this is pertaining to the language NLP. Okay, natural language processing services that are there in Azure. And then finally, you have, yeah, you have one more service, actually two more services that I would like to talk about. We'll just, I'll just walk you all through very quickly. Okay, that is the document and the knowledge mining. Okay, so let's say you want to um, analyze your um, forms, your invoices, your receipts. Okay, because when you work in an organization, okay, uh, you need to, let's say you have, uh, you have uh, some, uh, you had a client meeting and it, you had to go to the location of the client. Okay, so let's say you have taken care of the expenses. Okay, you paid for the lunch, you paid for the travel, etc. All of that. Okay, you paid for those. So you need to give receipts to your organization that as proof that, okay, you have paid for all those services. So let's say I want to, you know, uh, and I want to pick out certain fields. What was the amount, okay, for the lunch? What was the amount for the travel? Okay, otherwise there will be a person who will be, you know, let's say you have 10 receipts, that person, Bichara, will be an analyzing those 10 receipts, okay, and he will pick out the price out of it, you know, uh, put it into the register for lunch. It was this much for travel. It was this much, etc. Okay. Let's say you don't, you don't want to do that. You want a model to do it for you and give you the total of the, oh, I mean, total of the um, expense that was there. Okay. So you could go with the document intelligence services. You just have to train your model, submit multiple receipts. Okay. Multiple invoices, multiple IDs. And based on it, it will train itself. And next time, whenever you have a, another receipt coming in, you can definitely, um, then it will automatically give you the output. So this is the document intelligence services. You can even understand the documents like PDFs or something. You want to quickly, uh, you know, um, analyze them. Okay, you can even do that in the document services. Okay, read through the, uh, document very quickly. What is the gist behind the document? Then I talked about the form receipts. Okay. So you can even customize the model, train it according to your this thing, submit five samples. Okay. And it will automatically train itself. And you can then, uh, whenever you want to use this custom model, you can use it on top of your invoices or receipts that are there. So this is the document intelligence. So this is how it will look, okay? This is how it will analyze the forms, okay? So it has a studio dedicated for it. So this is how it will be. So it's like a no code, okay? People who don't know coding can use this particular uh, service. And yeah, then coming to the... So it's very easy. You'll have to study about it. Okay. But this is what is basically the document intelligence. Then you have the knowledge mining. Okay. Where you like how we go to the internet, we go to the web browser and we search, right, for a particular topic. Okay. Like Google or Bing, we have. So if I want to do that for my organization, okay, I want to segregate the data and uh, put them into departments like for marketing, for uh, sales, for HR. Okay. Otherwise, what we would need to do, we would need to go for the database, uh, take the permission and etc. Okay. Let's say I don't want to do that. I want to create like a web search 
within my organization where employees can come in and search for anything that they want. Okay, probably like uh, like how we have our courts in India, like people, uh, the, like lawyers, if they want to refer to a past case, okay, they put it into something called as case laws, right? They document those judgments, they document those uh, trials, okay, what the defense spoke about, what the uh, plaintiff spoke about, okay, all is documented. And let's say there is a similar case that has come in, okay, so they have, they have, since they have created a mine of all these things, the, 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 uh, the lawyers just have to go to that website. Okay, search for the particular case law. Okay, search for that particular case, past case, and just extract that information related or uh, related to that case. So they get the judgments, they get the transcript of the entire case because, like in courts, you know, there is a uh, sterner who sits along with the judge who is documenting everything. So you get the transcript of that particular case as well. So this is how it is used. So you can even use it in your organization as well. Okay. Like uh, a previous project, a similar project has come in. So you can refer to that. How was it executed? What kind of data was used? Okay. What kind of softwares were used and etc. You can do a thorough scan of that data. So the Service related to it is called as the Azure AI search. Okay, so this is what you can use. This is how it is used. You can ingest data from multiple sources. You don't need to know this as of now. Okay, but these are the steps that are used in order to uh, in the document intelligence and knowledge mining section. Okay, so you have two services. You have the form. Uh, You have the document intelligence service and you have the Azure AI search. OK, so this was about the Azure AI services. And since Gen AI has also become popular, OK, Azure, ha like Azure basically Microsoft has collaborated with um, OpenAI and all of those large language models, the LLM models have been integrated within the Microsoft Azure portal itself. It is called as the AI. Okay, so you can also use the same LLMs of OpenAI in Microsoft Azure. Okay, so for that also now, since generative AI has become very popular, okay, and it's going to just grow. Okay, so you have some models, LLMs related to that as well in your Azure portal. So let's just have a look at that. So what is generative AI? I had told all in the beginning, it is nothing but uh, something that generates, okay, chat GPT, we have seen it generates text. We have DAL E that generates images. Okay, so something that generates text, generates images, now even code can be generated, okay, is termed as a generative AI. OK, and the models that you create in the generative AI are termed as large language models whose job is to, of course, do generate text, OK, summarize text, OK, all related to text is the language. You also have something called as LIM, which is the la la sorry, large image models whose job like DALI, OK, whose job is to generate images. So there also tokenization and all of that works. OK, same thing, same to your NLP, but here it has to generate a text. That is the only difference between that. OK, so this is how it is done, tokenization. OK, so yeah, so tokenization is done. And then attention is brought to those, then encoding, decoding is applied. Okay, attention is the step three. So first step is you uh, tokenize them. Okay, then the second step is you embed them, okay, similar to your NLP. Okay, and then you bring them to attention. 
okay and then you generate a text out of that so you don't need to know much about it or you can i'll, I'll share the links from where you can study then copilots are also something that are becoming popular this is microsoft uh, generative model okay that can be used for again image generation for text generation all the same things okay it's just microsoft oriented okay you can have it on your bing you can have it on your edge browser okay but you need a license this is a, a license based um this thing and then i had been talking about prompt engineering which is very very important okay you need to know how to write prompts okay based on what prompts you give you will get the output okay so prompt engineering is uh, important how how well you write the prompts it is going to be very very important and then finally the is your open ai like i said all the open ai models have been brought into the infused into the microsoft cloud okay you can use the same models okay over here so these are the models that are currently supported in the azure open ai okay you have your so this is how you use the open ai you will need to be first of all a part of the organization because you need to fill a form okay there is a form that you need to fill uh, and it requires an azure subscription without which you will not be able to uh, uh, use the azure open ai studio okay so you, uh, you need to first of all have a appropriate subscription you need to be a part of an enterprise and uh, you will then get the access it takes around 48 hours 24 hours to 48 hours that means one day or two day for it to approve uh, that particular uh, to approve your uh, whether you whether you uh, whether you can use the open ai or not okay so this is what you can use in open ai okay so these are the services in azure that you can use let me just show you all a very quick demo how you can create a simple azure um, how you can create one of the azure ai services so i'm just going to show you that very quickly uh, i'm going back to my portal and i already have a code written so i'm just going to open that code because we are running out of time okay so i am sharing my screen so i'll just show you how to create a simple uh speech uh, a translation service okay so what we are going to do here is i'm going to speak something okay i'm going to speak in one of in english okay and i will translate whatever i have spoken into a language of my choice okay it could be french it could be hindi it could be some other language spanish and i will want that for i mean want the translated uh, speech to be spoken out loud okay so this is what we are going to do i'm going to show you all a very uh, simple example so i'm going to go to the azure ai services and you can see all the ai services that i just talked about okay whether it was speech it was language it was vision computer vision is nothing but the vision service then ai search facial service facial recognition service okay you have the speech service okay so now i'm going to create a simple translator service over here so i'm just going to come here say create and use the very same uh, resource group give a region i'm going to say east us region and give it a name okay say demo translate and use the free one free service that is there and okay this has been used so i'll just 
say one one today's date i'll just mention and we'll see yeah so this has been accepted and i'll just say review plus create and just say create so it's very simple to use this and i have a code already written over here okay so if you see this is the code so what it will do so here it is taking three parameters the first one is the endpoint okay so this is the endpoint which will help me connect okay which will help uh, the visual studio connect to the azure ai service the Azure translation service that I have created. So it's like a gateway. Okay. Then the second one is the region where I've deployed my translation service. And the third is the key that, okay, I have the access to the AI service that is there. So that is what it is basically over here. And then the code follows. Okay. I've used the um, speech SDK. Okay. And here, if you see, I have mentioned. So here I'm going to speak something. Okay. And here I have mentioned that I'm giving it a menu. Okay. I'm giving a choice that in which language do you want it to be translated? Okay. That's what I am giving. So the moment the user enters one of these, okay, that particular uh, speech okay, will be translated and given in these of uh, in one of these languages. So let's see how we can do this. So my service has been created. I'm going to go to the resource. And we have keys and endpoint. I'm going to copy this particular endpoint. OK, so if you see. I'm going to copy this. Which is similar to this one, right? So I'm going to copy that endpoint. And I'm going to paste it here. And over here, also I'm going to copy the key. And just save my code. Now I'm going to run this code. Okay, so I'm going to open a command prompt. And I'm going to say Python and the name of my file, which is translate speech.py. So this is how you execute a Python file. And say, let's say French. Hello. Okay, there was some. Okay, there's some error. I don't know why. Let me go back to the code. Uh, there's some error that I am getting. Okay, the program is stopping, but why can't it determine the Seven. 
सॉरी वी विल नॉट बी एबल टू शेयर द प्रेजेंटेशन विथ यू बट आई विल बी शेयरिंग अ लिंक from where the presentation has been made so that you all can go and definitely study that presentation i mean study whatever i just showed you all in the presentation okay so don't worry i will be doing that just give me one minute i can't why can this i don't know why is this not working just a um, minute just one minute some inundation happen Thing I have, oh, I have created a, a incorrect service. Is what I feel. Let me just. such a beautiful example that i wanted to show you all and i just tried it before this but now hey okay, let's not waste time on this there's some key error that i'm getting
problem in the code which i have to figure out so it take time 